has been a film waste presentation, darling. This is PTV, your home for memorable energy. Mostly dry conditions for us over the really entire week ahead. We're also going to see temperatures warm up just a little bit into the mid to upper 80s. But as we go into the first day of fall, this weekend temperatures will go back down. I'll have a look at those temperatures and our rain chances coming up. Right now on News Channel 6 at 10, school safety in Richmond County. How school leaders are planning to help keep students safe. Details for tonight's meeting. Also, another assassination attempt on live from Television Park. This is WGBF News Channel 6 at 10 on MeTV. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Graham Lee. Brad and Jenny have that idol. Coverage you can count on begins with Richmond County school leaders talking about school safety at Cross Creek High School. This comes after multiple incidents on campus this year and the recent school shooting in Winder, Georgia. I was at tonight's meeting where we learned about metal detectors going into one school and listened to parents and school leaders have conversations about the changes they say need to be made. This should have been a standing room only. I think more parents should have, you know, they were well informed that the meeting was going on. They had enough time. I understand people have schedules, but, you know, it's very important that we do get involved in our schools. Parent involvement, one of the big talking points for school leaders and even fellow parents at the meeting. Principal Dr. Laquanda Carpenter stressing the importance of checking backpacks. This comes less than a month after school leaders reported that administrators had to confiscate a gun from a student on campus. I encourage you as the principal to please check book bags. Um, you know, know what your, your young person is bringing into your home. And if you find such items, to please confiscate them and take them out of the hands of our young people. A week before that incident, law enforcement reportedly had to break up a fight in the school parking lot where one student had possession of a gun but was not used during that fight. School leaders reminding parents and students of the consequences. And if we find such an item, uh, again, you will be disciplined according to our code of conduct, and you will be turned over to law enforcement as well. Such items are not allowed on our school campuses. The school is also one of several in the county that were recently targeted by an online threat through a social media post. The deputy superintendent reminding families the importance of parents getting involved with their students and the school. The social media trend obviously has caused a lot of, a lot of anxiety and a lot of false reports. But we recognize that we still must respond even if it is a false report. But we do need you to talk to your young people, um, reach out to us. If you don't hear anything else tonight, I want you to know that most of our students are doing the right thing and are making good choices. I'm glad that they did inform us and are ready to have, and I think it's a conversation that doesn't need to be had. So I caught up with Forrest Duncan after the meeting, and he says the plan is to install those metal detectors around the school by October 1st. Well, it's time now for our first check of the weather, and we check in with our chief meteorologist, Jennifer Chibachi. It was nice and dry today in the CSRA, also a cooler day with cloudy skies. You can't see it now, but the clouds are still out there on our Terry Limber Hyundai Skyview Cam in Swainsboro. Winds are settling down just a little bit there in town. As I mentioned, no rain today at Augusta Bush Field, high of 82 degrees, so six degrees below average. Low this morning was right around average, started out in those mid to upper 60s, and that's what we're seeing now in the CSRA. So you can already tell that based off the temperatures at 10 o'clock, it will be much cooler tomorrow morning than it was this morning. So right now we're already at 68 in Augusta, 66 in Bardwell, McCormick at 65, 67 in Louisville, Aiken, you're also at 65, 68 in Lincoln, and 67 in Crawfordville. The winds are only up to around 10 miles per hour sustained, but we are still seeing some dust up to around 23 miles per hour in Aiken, 22 in Edgefield, 27 in Saluda. So it's our northeastern counties in South Carolina that are dealing with the highest wind dust, and that's because of the location to potential tropical cyclone 8, which is really just a low pressure system now. This did have some tropical characteristics earlier. It was potentially going to be a named storm, but it's not going to happen at this point. The low pressure center circulation already moved over land, and it's brought rain all day long across North Carolina. You can see it now, some thunderstorms here as well, flooding rain, especially along the coastline earlier today. But luckily, this system is weakening and staying to our north. Now, it is possible tomorrow we could see some isolated showers in the afternoon, but the morning will be starting out dry. Still mostly cloudy, going down to 62 degrees by the 7 o'clock hour. Coming up, I'll have a look at your full Viper 6 forecast, so stay with us. Back to you, Graham. 
All right, Jenna Fang, she does this effort to hire a permanent city and local community without water. What you can do to help people living in Perkins after Jenna's forecast. Breezy conditions with only isolated lake showers possible Tuesday and Wednesday. Overall, a mostly dry week with a brief warm-up trend. Then we'll cool down for the first day of fall this Sunday. All those details when we return. And it looks like no rain in forecast. All sunshine coming up, right? Yeah, it's going to be a nice week for outdoor activities. No heat, no rain. Ah, sounds good to me. Well, thank you, Jenna. Um, speaking of water, about 90... Well, coming up next, the Atlanta Braves are looking for a win at home over the Dodgers. And a look at the Lakeside Panthers, who have started their season 2-0 for the first time since 2019. Gianna Seppoli has sports up next. WJBF sports coverage you can count on. A defensive battle on tap tonight for Monday Night Football as the Atlanta Falcons 
are still playing against the Eagles in Philadelphia as we speak. A low-scoring game in this one so far. Bijan Robinson with a nice run in the first quarter, but the Falcons failed to convert in the red zone. The Eagles would strike first, but the Falcons retook the lead in the third quarter with a touchdown pass to Darnell Moody. Right now, Atlanta needs leads 15 to 10. I'll have full highlights when we return to News Channel 6 at 11 p.m. And some big news from the Carolina Panthers head coach Jay Canales announced a change at the starting quarterback position. Andy Dalton will replace Bryce Young at quarterback this week in Las Vegas. The decision comes after the Panthers have started the season out 0-2 and, and they've had their struggles on offense. Young has combined for just 204 passing yards and 13 points this season. The former Alabama quarterback converted just two of 22 third down attempts and Dalton comes in with 14 years of experience and 163 career starts under center in the NFL. I owe it to all the guys, the coaches, the staff, the players, everybody involved to be really critical about what we put on film, about what I'm seeing, and to make sure that I'm constantly making the best decision for the team every week. Um, and it happens to be the quarterback position. The Planthers will play in Las Vegas on Sunday. And another big week of football Friday night begins at Lakeside, where the Panthers are undefeated through the first month of the season. Lakeside is 4-0 for the first time since 2019 and is doing it in impressive fashion. The Panthers are outscoring opponents by an average of 32-9 and have allowed just six points the last two games combined. Head coach Steve Hibbett says he's pleased with this team's discipline so far, but the real test will come this Friday on the road. Just the team is coming together big time. I mean, they, they're, they're learning how to play together. They're learning how to make plays and uh, just finish ball games. We're going on the road. That's a big thing. We're traveling about three and a half hours down to Brunswick. So uh, it'll be a great test for us. This is a team that last year uh, we went down there and they, they, they put it on us pretty good. So uh, we need to see where we are as a team. And this is going to be a great test for us. And the Panthers travel to Brunswick on Friday to face 3-1 and one Glen Academy. Kickoff is at 7.30 p.m. Finally, the Braves hosted the Dodgers for Game 4 of the series. Bottom of the third, Braves looking to take the you know, tie the game at 1. Jorge Soler drills one off the wall, and take a look at this relay right here. Kike Hernandez to Will Smith, throws him out at the plate. Braves wouldn't get much momentum after that as the Dodgers get the shutout 9-0 win over the Braves. Next up, the Braves visit the Cincinnati Reds for a three-game series starting on Tuesday. I'm a registered nurse in the Augusta. And last but not least, a small town in Grundy County, Tennessee is home to just 1,500 people. But thousands of visitors come to visit the oldest family bakery in town. Walking through the doors of Dutch Maid Bakery in Tracy City is like taking a step back in time. Here's Blake Eason. Walking through the doors of this bakery is kind of like a step back in time. I would consider the bakery to be kind of like a museum that's working. That's Sydney Day, owner of Dutch Made Bakery in Tracy City. My favorite part of the bakery is when people eat what I make and I get to hear them say, Oh my gosh, that is the best I've ever had. That is so good. Founded in 1902 by Swiss immigrants, Dutch Maid is the oldest family-owned bakery in the state. This makes Day only the third owner after an extended family member put it on the market back in 2005. Sweetheart, the bakery's for sale. I think we should move back to Tennessee. Meanwhile, her husband Gary was still on the fence. Are you nuts? But almost 20 years later, he's proud of what they've continued together. My daughter got me a shirt that says... You retired, but you work for your wife now. And teamwork sometimes makes the dream work. Well, I'm putting them in the wrong place. So everything inside the bakery, we're talking ginger snaps, banana bread, and soon-to-be cinnamon pull-aparts is a part of a more than century-old tradition, hand-cut and handmade. It makes it where the items that you are purchasing are made with love. They're time-tested and true. Not to mention the antique appliances that have been passed down from generation to generation. Like this old antique mixer, it's from 1928. And we... That is so cool. That looks like wow. a tradition that's not only sweet, but savory too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those cinnamon pull-aparts look so good. 
That yeah, was I incredible. I have a little bit of a sweet tooth. So now I think I'm a little bit hungry now. That I'm makes two of us. Oh, we see these food stories at night. Dude, Man, that's, I know. That's tough. I know. Well, our 10-day forecast showing the chance of rain on Tuesday and Wednesday, but very low, 10 to 20 percent. 84 is your high tomorrow, but up to 87 Wednesday and Thursday. Cooling down, though, just in time for fall. 82 next Sunday, and then next week we'll see an isolated shower chance with temperatures staying in the low 80s, lows in the low to mid 60s. Well, thank you for joining us for your news at 10. It continues at the top of the hour on News Channel 6 at 11. And Hogan's Heroes is next here on the TV.